day five of our 12 days of Christmas giveaways here at Longwood Lavender and today I'm going to teach you how to make a foraged wreath. Now a um, couple things you can go out in your backyard use usually there are these spindly cedars that are growing out there that you could just take some pruning shears and um, and clip some clippings. You can go to Trader Joe's and get some clippings. Uh, those are great places. Lowe's. Sometimes you can go to a Christmas tree farm and they'll have leftover limbs that they're not going to use and they'd be willing to give them to you. Um, so you can forage these, you can buy these items. Um, Trader Joe's has a great selection. They usually have red berries and magnolia. If you have magnolia growing in your yard, you can prune your magnolia a little bit. So these are your cast of characters. A nice little form of grapevine. Some uh, floral wire, you're going to need scissors, pruning shears, and uh, some more pruning shears, just a different type. So you probably don't need both of these, but I'm using both today. <laughs> so we're going to get started. I'm going to teach you how to do this wreath. Again, you can purchase these items or you can just go out in your backyard and forage them. It's a great way to use nature and either bring it inside for the season um, or put it out on your door. Also, this should last. It's going to dry, but it should last on your front door all winter season long. So you're making this and you don't have to take it down until March. So it's a really great uh, way to decorate and get some longevity out of your decorations. So. The first thing we're going to do is grab, I'm going to take this guy. He's too large. I like to work with smaller items. So smaller is better for me. I'm just going to cut him off. I'm going to maybe just layer him with different textures. So I have this whole piece that I pruned off of a shrub, but I'm only going to take this portion of him. So see how I'm kind of layering the texture of both of these fronds. And then maybe I'll take one here and just, again, just to add a little bit of texture and a little bit of color. And I'm going to just start small. So let's go ahead and start. I have taken my grapevine form and I have twisted around the wire just to get me started. I've just secured it. That's it. Just wrap it around, twist it around, kind of like a little bread tie, just so it's secure. Then you're gonna take, make yourself a little bundle out of these pieces. You're gonna lay them. Actually, I want a little bit more of that yellow to show, so I'm gonna bring him to the top. You're gonna to lay him on this wired, secured wired piece, and then you're just gonna wrap real, real tight, usually about three or four times. Get him on there, and you're gonna get started. Now we're going to layer all of these pieces and make the wreath. So I'll get started. Completed. You can see I've got this little tiny section right here that I need to fill in. And I'm really going to let these first few pieces of greenery help me out. They're going to hide all my mechanics. And so I probably need to put maybe two more bundles in here, maybe three. We'll see what happens. But the layering process has helped, and it's so full that it's helped hide all the mechanics that are happening with the wire. And then we're just going to tuck it in and finish it off. So I'm going to make two, maybe three more bundles. I just use a magnolia, so I'm going to just do greenery and maybe some berries. Right, so I put my bundle together. And then I'm going to 
lift him, shove him in. See, I just shoved him in, lifted this here. It's definitely gonna take another bundle. Wrap him three times. Do a little tucking around. It's gonna need another bundle right there. Maybe two more. Let's see what we got here. need another accent piece. I've got the berry, I've got the magnolia. I'm just going to leave this one alone. I've made him kind of fat. All this texture. Let's see about tucking him in there. See how you just finished him off? So now I just need to wiggle this wire around so I can secure it, but I can also fluff it out. and then bend those others over to hide the mechanics of what has happened. So, now you've got your completed wreath. I need to tie him off. This is what he's gonna look like. Whoops. <laughs> this is what he's gonna look like and then I'll, I'll tie him off for you. Isn't it so pretty? I mean, that makes me really happy. So now, to tie him off, I'm gonna flip him over and honestly, once you learn the mechanics of making this wreath, you can make all kinds of wreaths with different foraged materials, different flowers. But I gave myself a good amount of wire, and then I'm just gonna sew it against, um, I'm gonna sew it around the grapevine. And I'm gonna do this probably three or four times to where I am feel like it's good and secured. So now I've pulled it through and I'm gonna stick it through the loop like you would tie a shoe. Let's make a knot. Let's do that one more time, just so we know everything is gonna stay really well. So I've pulled him through, stick him through the loop. And then one last time and we should be secure. If you can find him. This time, I'm gonna twist him. And this will give you a little hanging loop when you twist it. So you can hang your wreath. And he's all done. And there we go. Once you get him hung where you want him, you might need to bend some, some of the cedar a little bit, but looks pretty good. Enjoy your, I hope you guys follow along for the rest of our 12 days of Christmas that are blessed by it. And enjoy the season.